Hope everybody's doing really well today. It's the end of February. Temperature here in Washington in the, the Columbia River Gorge, it's in the, uh, it's in the mid 40s. And I'm hiking up to a, a waterfall. It's called Dry Creek Falls. And I think it's gonna be gorgeous. This is a beautiful waterfall. And today, if you've never photographed a waterfall, if you wondered how to do it, and you really don't know where to even begin, I'm gonna walk you through everything step by step. So let's get to the falls and I'll show you how to do it. So first thing you're going to want to do when you get to the waterfall is you want to kind of figure out which lens that you need to use. If it's a really, really tall waterfall that you want to get all in the single frame and you want to have leading lines in the front, you're probably going to need a wide angle, something in like the 16 millimeter, 20 millimeter range. If it's not as large of a fall, you might be able to get away with like a medium telephoto. Rarely, if ever, will you use something like 100 to 200 or 70 to 200 lens. So looking at this waterfall, I'm probably gonna start with my 16 to 35 because I do want some leading lines going into it. So that's my first choice, first decision. Um, the next thing is to find a composition. So this waterfall has these leading lines, the, the stream or the creek, it makes a big S, but there's a whole bunch of non-interesting you know, stuff right there that I really don't want in it. I got the falls there. The further back I get, there's a stone uh, bridge that goes across. Not that good in my frame. And I'm not, I don't think there's gonna be a better shot down there. So what I'm gonna do is walk up here, uh, somewhere up in here and find a composition that I think will work and go from there. So step two is gonna be to make sure that you don't have anything in your frame that you don't want after you find your composition. I've got some branches, let me show you. I have some branches, you might be able to see them right here. And then over here, I've got a, a, a tree, a dead tree that's coming into the frame a little bit. So what I wanna do is I wanna get a clean shot of the fall. So I'm gonna finesse the composition to keep that out of it as much as I possibly can. My leading line is gonna be right here. And I'm probably gonna be shooting around 24 millimeters, somewhere around in there. Most locations during the day that Top of the waterfall is going to have a white void of nothingness that you want to try to not get into your frame if you can. And I've got these wonderful, just moss covered rocks that are going to be epic in the photograph. So I will include some of those. Get gotten really close to the water and I backed, uh, I basically went to 16 millimeters simply because I'm that much closer to the water and the waterfall is tall. So I've got to have, I want to stretch that leading line on the front and make that water, and get all of the waterfall uh, so I can get those beautiful rock covered, moss covered rocks up at the top. So there's my composition. I've got this wonderful boulder right here in the middle and then the, the leading right up into the falls. And it looks like over here. So here's the, uh, there's the boulder that's in my foreground right here and it goes all the way up to the falls. The next step is, where do you start with your settings? You go into manual mode, where do you start? Number one, keep your ISO as low as possible. So let's set that at 100, right off the bat, just do 100, all right? The next step is your aperture. Since I've got a wide angle lens and I've got, I want everything to be sharp from front to back, I started at F11, okay? So I will start at F11 and might be able to change that or might have to but again this is just starting give you a place to start on your camera your shutter speed is going to vary depending on what you want, want the water to look like so with water flow i start anywhere between a half a second and a quarter of a second 
So let's go F11 in half a second. So looking at the back of my camera, I can see that this water right here in the middle has absolutely no detail and it's blown out. It is, I've got highlight alerts. When I, when I zoom out, I can see there's blinkies happening showing that I've blown my highlights. So I have to compensate for that. I don't like the look of the water because it's just too, there's no texture. All right, if you look up here, again, it's just, there's no texture at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my shutter speed faster and it's also gonna take care of those blinkies. So there's the back of the camera. You can see I've got my highlight alert on and it's showing that these are like gonna be really, really, the highlights are gonna be blown all in these locations. So I'm gonna increase my shutter speed. I'm at a third and I'm at a quarter. And it shows me that I'm about a third of a stop underexposed, minus 0.3 right there. So that looks pretty good. So let's take the shot and I'll show you what the two looks like Right now on the computer, I'll show you the, uh, the half a second at F11 and then the quarter second at F11. And these will be the raw files straight out of the camera just so you can see the difference. At half a second, it may look okay, but when you zoom in and you actually see the water, there, it's absolutely no texture. The whites are too white. It's blown out. It's not the look I'm going for, and I'm going to need a faster shutter speed. Now we're looking at a quarter second and the water texture is excellent. You can see all the texture, it's not blown out. There's a nice flow to it and it's a great look that I like. So now that I think I've got it dialed in, what would happen if, if let's say it's still too dark and you're underexposing by a lot? Well, you've already got your shutter speed where you want it that's the most important on your waterfall is the look that you want with the shutter speed so you can't change that then you've got your aperture if you want everything in sharp focus from front to back you really can't change that you've got a you've got that set f11 is perfect for what i need with this wide angle lens it's got everything sharp from front all the way to back so the only thing i'd have left to change would be my iso now you can, if you're underexposed, you're just going to change that ISO and make it, you know, go from 100 to 160 to 200 a little bit at a time till you get it so that it's not underexposed. If it's the opposite and you're as low as you can go, if it's overexposing because you're in the sun and you've lowered that ISO as far as you can go, you can't go any further and you still need it darker, you can increase your depth of field because this, you know, you can just go from f11 to f16 because again your shutter speed is your sweet spot for the look in the water that you want so let's quickly recap the steps number one you pick your lens based on the size of the waterfall and the look that you want usually a wide angle or medium telephoto 24 16 to 24 16 35 step two Find your composition. Step three, you're going to set your ISO at 100. That's the starting point. Set your aperture at F11. That's a good, good spot to start at. That's where I like to start. Then you're going to start your shutter speed at around a quarter to a half a second. So somewhere in that vicinity. Check your exposure. As long as you're not blowing out your highlights and you're not too underexposed, go ahead and take the shot because you want to dial in the look of the water. That's the key for me on waterfalls is getting the look in the water that you want. So when I'm doing waterfalls, I, I like to expose to the right. What that means is I want to keep it as bright as I can without blowing out any highlights. I don't want any highlight alerts and I don't want, uh, I want to make sure, I should say, I want to make sure that I have texture in that water. So I'm gonna bring that right up, to the, the exposure right up to that. That way my shadows aren't incredibly just crunched and dark. And then you're good to go. So there is the easy steps to getting really nice waterfall photos. Hope you got something out of the video. Hope you liked it. I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. 
I release a new one every single Wednesday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.